Hey everybody, beautiful day here in Oregon, Central Oregon, just around the bend from Bend. <laughs> yes, I just said that. Uh, out here in farm country, gorgeous day, probably 80 degrees, warm, and it's in the afternoon, probably about 4 o'clock, and oh, I'm getting a little water here. If you can see here, let's take a look. You see that we have some irrigation set up to water these fields. In AP Environmental Science, we talk a lot about irrigation because that's how we grow crops, right? We have to water the crops in order to feed ourselves and in order to feed the meat or the animals that we like to eat. They require plants, so lots of water. Over half the water we use on Earth for humans is used to water crops. So irrigation is a big, big deal here. So you can see behind me the contraption that's set up. And just turning the camera around, you can see that it's a long pipe, the length of the field, and it's set up with sprinklers down the line and also big wheels. And those wheels are used obviously to move the entire contraption down the field. I'm not sure what they're growing here, to me, it just looks like grass. Um, so they could be growing hay in order to um, feed the cattle. I did see some cattle up the road. Now, the purpose, of course, of irrigation is to water the crops, right? It's not to water me over here, although I'm getting some of that. Um, but if we analyze the efficiencies in the system, we can see that this is probably not the most efficient system. Right? First of all, it's spraying up. These things are spraying up into the air. That's to get the distance that it's needed to spray onto the plants. But think about on a hot day like this, how much water is being lost to evaporation, right? Hitting the air and the mist instantly turns into water vapor. So you're losing that. Um, and the wind, it's a windy day as you can hear, the wind also contributes to that evaporation. And so in AP Environmental Science, we talk about efficient ways to water our plants so that we don't lose a lot of water into water vapor or into the air, to evaporation, um, or into the road, as is happening here with this sprinkler on the end. Now, I'm not sure what the farmer's reasons are for using this system. I'm sure they've got good reasons for using this system. Uh, we could analyze it for its efficiencies, but I'm sure the farmer could also analyze it for its benefits. Perhaps it's cost efficient. Perhaps it's easy to maneuver. Easy to repair and maintain. All of these reasons, right? So you have to consider the whole picture here. Not just the uh, environmental impact. So. As we know, it takes lots of things to make a system sustainable, right? Okay, everybody. Hope you're having fun. Talk to you later. Okay, folks. One more thought about agriculture before we move on and talking about water use. The, this is the community of Gateway down in the valley. And if you look over across the hilltop here, I think this is called a mesa, flat-topped ridge. Uh, you can see the field where I was talking to you from yesterday. Now, I took the road down here and came all the way back up this road here. But I wanted to look at these fields. Notice the difference between the man-made landscape, the human-made landscape of those fields down there, and also the fields up top. So you get two levels. And then the natural landscape in between here, which is essentially desert, right? And so this landscape is not going to provide enough natural water for these fields. So what happens is we take in water from the Deschutes River, which you can't see far off in the distance where I stayed last night, and they pump it in to these fields and they spray, and that's what we saw yesterday spraying. And so the green of those fields represents all the water that's been brought in to water these plants. Without that water, that humans have brought in, these plants would not be able to survive here. So again, water is a big, big business in agriculture. And finally, um, this field right here, if you really look closely, you can see little blobs of hay. They've already baled the hay, so they're going to be picking that up to feed the cattle. 
and not sure what they're growing in here. Again, uh, possibly more hay or an alfalfa crop or soybean crop. Okay, Central Oregon, beautiful place if you ever get the chance. Okay, one more system I want to show you here in Oregon. This is a different spray system, but you can still see the emitters on the ends here. The water's brought along the system, along this pipe, and sprayed out onto the plants. I think this is a cover crop of uh, clover, it looks like. So they're in between plantings here. They're planting a cover crop to put nitrogen back into the soil. And you can still see it's still set on wheels. The other cool thing you can see about this system is you can actually see the ditch that brings the water, which is diverted from the Deschutes River by a series of canals, to the fields here. But again, it's two in the afternoon, hottest part of the day. It, the land is hot, the air is hot, so there's a lot of evaporation happening here on this system for sure. So not the most efficient system as far as water conservation is concerned. And one last thought as we move on and take a last look at these sprinkler systems. You might say, well, what's wrong, Berthium, with evaporation happening, right? It's the water cycle, so it's just going to go up into the air, uh, become clouds or water vapor, and then eventually form rain and come back down again, right? So why do we need to be concerned about saving water and minimizing evaporation? Well, if you think about it, this water comes from the Deschutes River. And so what happens when it doesn't rain in the Deschutes River? for a year or two years, like we're experiencing in California. Well, that means we don't have the reserves in order to use the water that we need. In other words, this evaporation that's happening here is not going to fall back on these crops. It's going to be moved by the wind and the air currents into other parts of the country and the globe and settle down and rain down somewhere else.